Today I had to watch Henry, but that wasn't going to stop me from coming to see you. You go to Target every day. You walk through these doors past these giant red balls. You look at clothes, but you never try anything on. Why is that? Then I see you go down the toy aisle, but you never really glance. Just walk past. I go into the book section where all the intellectuals go. Rarely visited in a place like Target. And then I see you. Hello, you. You are not like the others. You look at books for an escape. The literary authors that you tend to go to, they see you. They get you but not like I get you. No, I see how special you really are. I know that I must protect you. I know that I must watch over you because if I don't, who will? You are a mystery. Why? Why that book? Are you flirting with me? I know one day you'll see me and that's when you and I and Henry will be a family that you are so longing for as well. We got him. We got him. We just happened to stumble upon him in the bookshop. Good job. Um, yeah, we got lots of new stuff. Like those pineapple shorts and stuff. Oh, this is so fun. Family outing. Cosplaying. I was just thinking yesterday, like we haven't shopped together in a while. No, because since she was born, I don't think we have. Because always somebody stays with her at home. Or in the car if we're out and about. I know, it's crazy. So, oh, <laughs> what do you think? And she's kind of independent now. She's not just stuck in her little, like, stroller. She can see things. This is so fun, actually. <gasps> do you love Target? <laughs> do you love your little Bijorn? It's a whole new world. I know. She's like, wow, I'm like a person. I'm like a little adult. Why walk? I know. Nothing to walk. It's so fun. And I feel like she's back in the womb. I always miss being pregnant. So I'm like, oh, it's like she's back in my belly. <laughs> she loves to see herself in this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who's that little baby? Who's that little baby? <laughs> she loves this. First time in uh, the Bajorn. How do you like it? I think she likes it. I feel like I'm pregnant again. It's actually so. People were right. Like, carrying her is like a lot, but like, this is like nothing. This is like fun. <laughs> She loves it. Do you love it? Yeah, let's go to the book section. I heard there's some hotties there. Let's go scope it out. She just loves looking around. <laughs> oh, wait, that's my section. Uh, yeah. Nice. Actually, they have a bunch of new stuff for her. Okay, we'll go there. We'll go there after. Oh, She's so excited for Let's her pick her toy. Oh, that's true. And pick her outfit. Baby picks her outfit. <laughs> Look at all the Barbies. We should go see if they have the Malibu Barbie dream house. Oh, we did have it too. Yeah. Oh, they do. No way. Yeah. <gasps> oh, no, they don't have the Malibu one. Oh, man, the one with the side. I saw it at Walmart. Oh, sometimes they have it, though. Sometimes they have it. Dang. I like this thing. Look at this. <laughs> Little chicken. Is this from a movie or something? Yeah, it's from Moana. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, they're so cute. Do you love him? <laughs> like, I'm not. The sky is blue. The birds are chirping. I have my Burger King shirt on that the uh, Burger King drive through gave me last time I came dressed as an employee. I'm super excited because um, today is spicy chicken fries day. Okay, you guys, I know I'm like delusional in a lot of ways and I'm probably delusional about this, but maybe not. I feel like I put out there that they were, I wanted spicy chicken fries. Like, I feel like I had that out to the universe and it's here. Spicy chicken fries are here. I'm so excited because last time I was at Burger King, I was like, Burger King is like superior, superior. It was so freaking good. And then I was just thinking like, oh, their spicy chicken sandwiches back in the day were like so good that their spicy chicken fries would be everything. So they have spicy chicken fries. It's spicy chicken fries day. I am so excited. So we're going to go on this little journey together. I can't wait. We're going through the Burger King drive-thru. This makes me so happy. I love when there is menu items even more when it's new menu items that i like because a lot of times they come out with 
new menu items i think burger king something out like a mccrispy like bacon on chicken burger or something i'm just like i'll try it but like it's not gonna be my fave no one's here i feel like i have the whole burger king to myself last time i was here this burger king gave me this t-shirt so i'm wearing it out of nothing but pure joy i hope they have them watch i don't even have them no i bet they do fingers crossed it's gonna be awkward if they don't okay let's see i don't see them like advertised Hi, yes. Do you have the spicy chicken fries? No, just the regular. Just the regular. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks. They were supposed to come out today. Awkward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I was like so excited. I'm trying to think if there's another Burger King. I don't think there's like another Burger King close by. Okay, let me pull over and reevaluate this. I, did I get the dates wrong? I think so. Mm, pulling over. There's like this weird like parking lot just on the other side. Okay, let me look. We're through another Burger King. I drove 30 minutes. I tried to call, no one answered. But I still just like, is it gonna be here? Or is this gonna be the biggest fumble of my life? Is this going to be the biggest? I don't know. I don't see it like advertised. Oh no. Hello, what may I go for you today? Hi, yes, do you guys have the spicy chicken fries? Spicy chicken fries? No, we don't have them at the moment. Okay, um, you know what, that's okay. Thank you though. Here. Okay, I was um super excited to get the spicy chicken fries. Clearly, they're not anywhere. It's March 6th today, okay? It's March 6th. I don't really know why they say they'd be out March 6th, and I've come to two different ones, but that's okay. I actually didn't mind driving out to this one because I knew Arby's was close by. So I might just go ahead and get some cheese fries because I just I don't know. I was so excited, but here I am gonna go through Arby's and my burning errands. So um, it's okay. I actually listened to um, the podcast podcast on the way over here. Um, becoming a fan of Pen Beg Badgley. Badgley. Um, I always like the name Pen because you guys know I wanted to name one of my children a paper mate. <laughs> my husband was like, no. Um, but I love the name paper mate. So I love the name Pen. I just like the name of like, like stationery. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I like the name Pen. Um, it's like Pen and Teller too. But anyways, I have a lot to say about that. Because honestly, today was all about spicy chicken fries. But I, I don't think that's going to happen today, you know. So we're going to talk about you. Why not, okay? <sighs> Arby's is so close. Okay, cool. I'm excited about this. This is kind of like a win in my book because I actually love Arby's cheese fries. I just wish I had my Arby's. Oh, they have like a mint chocolate shake, I guess, because it's um, St. Patrick's Day. I love this Arby's. <laughs> It's really far from my house. I literally drive like 30 minutes to get here. Plus the other working I was at, like, um, and I wanted to wear my U shirt because I want to talk about you today, um, before the second half of the fourth season comes out because I, I have just like a lot of thoughts on it. And then I was listening to the podcast and I was like giving me a lot of like, um, I don't know. Okay. There's a whole discussion. To, I feel like I could do like five. I could do a whole podcast. I did a whole lost podcast. I feel like I could do a whole you podcast. I'm really far behind because like we binged from season one, two weeks ago, we started. Um, so I think I'm just going to get cheese fries and mozzarella sticks. I mean, that's a lot, but, <laughs> um, so we're so behind. You guys know that like we just finished Desperate Housewives and lost like last year. So like we're a little more up to date with you. Um, but we had, neither one of us had seen any of the seasons, but like season four came out and everyone was talking about it. So we're like, I even have a U shirt at home I wanted to wear, but that's okay. Okay, first of all, best, like, this is like, I, like, I, mm, I, om ugh, I almost love it more than Lost and Desperate Housewives, and that's a lot to say because those are my like, two favorite shows ever, Lost specifically. Okay, let me get my, my order on. Thank you for choosing my wrist order when you're ready. Hi, yes, can I get a large crinkle fries with two cheese sauces? What 
Oh, yeah. Uh, can I get a large crinkle fries? Okay. With two cheese sauces on the side, please. Okay. And then can I also get a four-piece mozzarella stick? Okay. And um, I'll take a peach lemonade as well. What size? Um, I'll take a large. Large size, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Alright, it's going to be 14.45 out the window. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to just really go out on a limb here and say that you might be my favorite show ever, almost. Like, I really do. I really think that for an, a multitude of reasons. Okay, one, like, you guys know I do not like true crime. I actually don't even like gory things, really. So, the first two seasons, to me, weren't that gory, really. Season three was a little more, but season three hat was, like, the best because it had the best story and 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 characters and all that stuff like that i really love the way the, sh the show progressed with him like i love that it like started in new york which i usually don't love shows set in new york which is probably why i didn't watch the first season i remember watching like, the first episode and be like can't relate don't like shows in new york that take place in new york never have never watched gossip girl friends seinfeld like sex in the city like none of those shows i'm not i'm just i never liked it i grew up in the midwest all these like shows that took place in california so um but i love it okay and um there's like a lot of thoughts that go through it as someone who has like an obsessive personality like it's an interesting show to watch i'm also someone with borderline personality disorder so watching it as someone with a mental illness like watching a show about people with like mental illness is really interesting especially coming from someone with a treated mental illness you guys know i was very as untreated for a very long time and misdiagnosed multiple times i had taken medications like prescription medications for my mental illness but really with borderline which is what i have um there's really no medications to take i don't take medications for it i had to really go to treatment with it and when it comes to like obsession obsession and obsessive personality disorder it's a really interesting thing to watch it portrayed on tv because it's actually very accurate in my experience as someone with like an obsessive personality disorder so there's obviously no spoilers in this so if you guys haven't watched the show or whatever i've only watched the first two episodes of season four <sighs> okay let me start back with season one so season one was like just like it was good like it was really captivating because i i there's something as someone with a mental illness right like obviously going through treatment and stuff like you know the difference between what's right it's wrong but as someone with like an obsession like watching people online especially with social media which i think this is a really interesting part of this show is how they use social media to like watch people online i think it's something we all do but when you have an obsessive personality disorder or you have you know or um was it histrionic personality disorder where you kind of like over romanticize or you 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 take emotions from what the, more than what they are or relationships from more than i always thought that before i knew like boundaries and healthy relationships with like anybody girls guys whatever like i you could sometimes think the relationships are more than they are if someone's like nice to you or something you know what i mean so it was really interesting to watch i always have liked that sort of <sighs> again as someone from like a like a mentally ill standpoint there's something sort of like romantic about someone like um you know obsessing over you and would do anything for you right obviously the whole unaliving thing is there's like i'm putting that aside right we're in the world of whatever there is something like romantic that this person wants to like protect you at all costs and that's like the theme of joe right is he wants to protect this person that he loves at all costs he has mommy issues we find out in season three and all stuff like that but i don't know there's just something i've just always liked that storyline of how a guy will just like do anything for you you know what i mean and that's like a romanticized in a, like a weird way again i've always wanted that relationship again before treatment before knowing what a healthy relationship is a healthy relationship is an obsession isn't obsessing isn't like you know being obsessed addicted like isolating like that's what i thought you know it's just like you and them and passionate and if there's no passion and drama and you know i'm gonna do all this for you like then it's not real when i realized a healthy relationship with me here my therapy is more just like feeling peace and contentment and just like having peace when you're with that person and it's not like i have to fight everybody for you i have to watch every move you make although like that's always what i thought relationships were or love or whatever so loved season one loved the cast love everything about it loved the the female lead loved the ending loved the whole box thing i think that just takes it into this place of kind of like almost over the top a little silly um which is like the box kind of becomes sillier each episode like all of a sudden it's in la or each season it's like it's in la and then it's like in their bakery in suburbia like um i, I thought i think that's like a character unto itself which i think gives it an absurdity which i kind of think is fun which is why season two was so cool and which la first of all you guys know i love la like anything that takes place in la and truly as la mostly is in a lot of shows it becomes a character in the show you know with like the sort of air one you know they're well, i forget what it's called something never on a backward or we're not or whatever um obviously you have like 40 who's very la we meet him right away he's so la crystally isn't it 
didn't age well like did not age well um you know yikes <laughs> okay hold on <laughs> i'm not trying to start drama or anything but like ooh. okay hold on Thank you. Uh, just the cheese sauce. Did I have it on there? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. No. Thank you. Uh, um, I was oh. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. I love your nails. They're so cool. Do you want? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It might be easier that way. And do it this way. Your background's cute too. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, nice <laughs> to meet you. So yeah, of course. Um, I left a note last time. I was too shy to say something. Oh. And I saw in your video that you were like, oh, she should just say something. But oh, where? You left a note on my car? Yeah, no, it was it was in the bag. In the bag. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Oh, my God. I know. Originally, I was down at Burger King, but they didn't have what I wanted. So, I'm like, let me come to Arby's real quick. So, that's why I have the Burger King on today. Otherwise, I would have owned Arby's. <laughs> Arby's is better anyways. I always say it. Thank you. Nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> oh, love them. Oh, my God. Love them so much. Okay. This is the best Arby's. I'm glad I drove all the way. Okay. Let me just pull over and eat these cheese fries and talk more about you. But, yeah, like, the Crystal Yeah one was, like, cool. Oh, like okay his character was kind of like look I know in real life like I, he's he's like admitted that he had a problem and stuff I'm not really not trying to harp on it because I know when you have a problem like it's 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 like that kind of stuff I mean anyways hopefully he's moved on from it whatever and whatever I don't know but I just <laughs> when I saw like his character I was like okay um and the thing with you and like my husband totally disagrees with me I'm like you know what though but like it's always like warranted like these people are kind of like you know when he does like on the lives and look not warranted in no way do I think in real life obviously no one should do that but I'm just saying to me they're just not like random senseless ones like scream movies or any horror movies or stuff where people just like randomly I don't like people like I just don't like that stuff I don't like true crime stuff when it's real I don't like any of that stuff you know what I mean but but I feel like there's like again in fantasy land or whatever it's like the it's like a justice thing right like these people are not good people you know that guy was gonna Chris Lee's character I forget his name Hundy or something was gonna you know he did he like was slipping or something and Jenna Ortega the, it, oh my god that's the other thing in the young girl's drink but Jenna Ortega okay here's the other thing Jenna Ortega was 16 I looked this up 16 at the time of filming okay she plays an underage girl in the movie like she's like 15 in the show that's the other thing I'm just kind of like I thought there was like a like a law against that where like because Jodie Foster in Taxi Driver was 13 and she like I think had like she, her character unzipped like Robert De Niro's like pants or Harvey Keitel's pants or maybe both or something like that but like I guess they had to have her sister do the unzipping part but either way it was kind of like um I mean she also like just she was dancing with Harvey Keitel when he was like 40 and she was like 12 and you guys know my history of this like you know back again I have a mental illness and when I was younger I like romanticized that kind of thing I was like that's what I want you know so I always desired older guys like inappropriately so when I was like 12 and 13 because I would watch like the Jerry Lee Lewis movie when he married his 13 year old cousin and I was like oh he takes care of her or taxi driver like Harvey Keitel who played Jodie Foster's pimp in, in that like I romanticized that in some weird way and so yeah I mean I again I, I had I had issues I had trauma whatever but I thought it was interesting that like she was actually 16 at the time because Jenna Ortega looks young still like she plays she played Wednesday and I'm sure she was like older but I was kind of like I don't know it just kind of sat weird with me because she was also saying like everybody wants to f the 15 year old like it just felt kind of like i don't know you know i don't know that was that kind of gave me the ick i'm not gonna lie but um it was season two was good he meets love oh my god i'm so excited for these oh i love when mozzarella sticks are nice and fresh mm. So good. Mm -mm -mm. I love food. So 
so good. The season two is good. He meets love, who turns out love can be just as crazy as him. Kind of followed him, kind of unalive people for him, you know. And I like that twist because also the mental illness person me is somewhat kind of like love. Jealous and loyal. <laughs> like whatever it takes to get someone out of the way, you know, I'm again, I'm not in real life, but you 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 can see or someone with my mental illness, my obsessive personality, all of that, histrionic personality, all that stuff like that, you know, you you have those feelings. Of course, you have to get treatment to regulate these feelings or emotions because like you can drive yourself crazy, you can drive someone else crazy, like it's just it's obviously it's not healthy. Um, and then he was gonna unalive her. Then she was just like, I'm pregnant, which I didn't think was gonna be real, but then it was real. Season three comes around, they're in the suburbs. Best season ever. Everyone had said that to me when I was talking about it on Twitter. <clears throat> Best season ever. We binge watch these. We save these for Saturdays to binge watch. Best season ever. Oh my god, we just laid on the couch the whole day and just binge watch. It was everything. Season three is so good because the other characters around them like are more are are more they're all more exciting right like the influencer the mommy the mommy influencer and her husband the scene of them in the woods when uh joe and all the guys go out in the woods it's like so crazy and so good they're trying to be good and they have a baby which again kind of like adds to the absurdity of their lives <laughs> It's good. Like, they're trying to be better. They're in the suburbs. Like, Joe's really trying to be better, right? They're not seeking, like, therapy, which they should do. Meditate, all that stuff like that. There's affairs happening, which, like, broke my heart when Love had an affair with the young boy across the street. But then, you know, Joe's also, like, one foot out of the marriage. He's, like, has a new love in Marianne. Um, it's all it's all a mess, right? The This first episode is, like, a banger, right? Like, unaliving the neighbor next door the one that joe kind of has like this obsessive the obsession with he has like a box for follow the same format season one season two season three right a new woman that needs saving that's having issues with like you know whatever he's always protecting someone whether it's a child a woman he loves like what he's always trying to like protect the people who need protection so same story but season three just and oh my god season three has way more intimate scenes this scene where they're gonna do like their first like open marriage act where they do it with the couple next door and there's the four of them oh my god just so first of all it turns out it, it starts so like i for valentine's day this year i wanted to watch 50 shades of gray we always do a stay at home valentine's day and my husband has been like he will watch everything with me mama mia like any show i want he'll want to watch he just did not want to watch Richie Shades of Grey. He's like, that just does not sound, that's, you know, whatever. I was like, I really want to watch it. We watched it. I did not get turned on <laughs> at all. This scene in season three of You, the couple, the four of them, I was just like, mm, like, I was like, huh, I'm like uncomfortable. I was like blushing. I was like, yeah. I was by the Richie Shades of Grey. I was like, oh, yeah. Heck yeah. And then it turns, it turns like a little absurd. Like then it gets a little funny <laughs> and then it gets obviously scary. <laughs> it gets a little crazy. Um, such a good scene to me. That was like one of the best scenes in any TV show ever. So good. The, the, the sex scenes in this season are great. I think the sex scenes in all the seasons have been great, which kind of leads me to what they talked about on the podcast today on Pod Crush. But first of all, let's get to season four. Season four. When I say like, I know, and this is not going to get me on Pod Crush or they're not going to be my friend or they're not going to be like, that's cool. This person's a fan of the show because I'm just telling you right now, I can't watch season four. Like I can't even watch it. Like we've been trying to watch like an episode a night and my husband's like, let's watch like, another episode. I'm like, uh, I'm like dragging my feet about it. Whereas like last weekend, like I, we literally stepped till four in the morning, which I go to bed at usually like eight, eight o'clock at night to watch all this the a whole thing of I couldn't go to bed until I knew how the seasons ended so 
I don't know. It just became, it just is like so bad. And like listening to the podcast, cause I was trying to listen to this podcast to see like why it like changed. And I get it. Like he's saying it had to be fresh. They had to do something different, but I don't think they had to. I think it's like, if something's not broken, don't fix it. If something's not broken, you don't have to fix it. Right? Like pattern is great. We all loved white Lotus season one and white Lotus season two, because it's all like the same. I get it. It's like a little bit different character. Obviously it's different. Maybe that's not the right thing, but you come back to something because you love it, right? You're like, this is so good. Like, we know the characters. We know what's going to happen. His obsession. And then they get some hot, you know, sex scenes or whatever. And I, like, it's not even about that. It's just more like it's a whole different story now. And it's all, it's in London. Um, which, I mean, I just, I, can't, I love British people. I was on Celebrity Big Brother. Like, you know, there's some, you know, Naveen Andrews is one of my favorite actors of all time. British. Harry Potter. Alan Rickman. Like, I love, I do love, like, British films when they're British films but this just feels weird and like forced and like I don't know it's like none of the characters you're like into the first death of the the first ep I literally don't even know who that person is and now everyone's like hates this person and I'm like who are these people and why is Joe like just friends with these people <laughs> like all of a sudden it doesn't make sense well, I think we only watched two episodes so far like Marianne I don't even know where she's at like yeah. it's just like really bad and I'm like confused and like none of the characters are like good I don't know. So, I'm listening to the podcast, Pod Crush. And I haven't listened to it before, but you guys know. <laughs> like, literally, I become obsessed with, like, people I like. Like, I have very parasocial relationships. Obviously, healthy. I never have, like, unhealthy parasocial relationships. I'm just, I guess maybe when I was, like, not really, like, to the point where I'm, like, following them or whatever. But, like, there was points definitely where I thought, oh, if I marry Brad Pitt's cardboard cutout, the real Brad Pitt will, might see it and may want to, like, go on a date with me. Like, I really thought that. So, you know, that's, that's the thing you need to get, you need to seek treatment for. But I do get into, like, actors. If I watch a TV show, I got to know their whole background. Okay. So... I see Penn Badgley has this podcast and I'm like oh this is cool you know he had his wife on there how did you meet his wife he has the actress who played love he has Jenna Ortega he's like you know it's, it's interesting and then there's these two girls that are his co-hosts they're kind of just like I don't I mean I don't really know they're just but they're, they seem like just down to earth like I don't know they all just like seem like best friends it's a cool podcast to listen to so they did one about why season four changed and they specifically asked him and he did say it's kind of a viral clip now like why but he asked not to have any more intim intimate scenes. Um, and they talk about actually Neil McDonough, McDonough who I, who was on that movie with uh, Lindsay Lohan where she's like the stripper. Um, but most people know him from Desperate Housewives like season like five or something. The one who um, like lost his daughter. He was married to Nicolette Sheridan on the show. Um, he lost his wife and a daughter in a car accident on the show. Um, he was Catholic and doesn't want to do kissing scenes. He considers kissing to be cheating on his marriage. And so him badgley kind of said the same thing which okay obviously like everyone ha can have whatever boundaries they want but and i'm not an actor so i don't know and i do know that a lot of actors end up leaving their spouse to go be with the person like i don't like that right brad pitt being one of them right well we don't know for sure allegedly whatever but he was married to jennifer anderson did mr and mrs smith all of a sudden he's with angelina jolie like that happens i guess a lot i don't know again i'm not an actor so i don't know how they go with these like intimate scenes and stuff like that to me, like, yeah, there's good chemistry, so you, like, feel it, right? You're like, well, okay, well, like, we're feeling it at home, but you always hear actors say, like, it's, it's not sexy, it's not romantic, it's not like that, because, you know, people are watching, and they're staging it, and all this stuff, so I was like, hmm. I'm kind of like, uh, and he said he, he said it before he signed up for this show? I don't know, or maybe he had a change of heart, because he's been, I look all this up, he's been married to his wife since, like, 2017, and so I was like, okay, well, you took the first three seasons. And again, people's boundaries can change. You can you can totally do whatever you want, whatever you want. It just sucks for, like, fans of the show. Okay, for me. I'll just speak for me. It just sucks because it's like, that's like, that was such a hot part of the show, you know? Um, there's certain things that make sure Lost didn't have, obviously, sex scenes or anything like that. So that's not why I like Lost. But, like, Desperate Housewives, they would have some, you know, when the sexy scenes would come on, I really liked it. Especially seeing them from, like, women in their 40s because I'm 35. So, I kind of liked seeing older ladies in these, like, hot sex roles. Including, like, Lynette, who is kind of, like, your average mom next door. But also Gabrielle, who could be this glamorous. Like, Brie, you know, who was a little older. And it was cool to see that. That, like, older middle-aged women have their sex drive. Me becoming a middle-aged woman pretty soon. And with you, it was such a fantasy. 
like this guy who would do anything for you and the way they shot him and everything was just it was just so hot okay i don't know if there's any shot like game of thrones had some hot intimate scenes you know so i'm not like a perv by any means like i really i don't even watch you know you know the, the hardcore stuff. i don't it does nothing for me so like this kind of stuff is like very this like sensual it's like very erotic like i don't know and to me that was like a huge selling point of the show and like specifically like season three and stuff it just was like so you know they would be fantasizing about other people or they would do this or they'd be you know swinging and the scenes were just so like passionate i don't know so i don't know if that's like one of the reasons but also just the whole plot switched and i get wanting to switch it up but also why 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 do we need to switch it up why can't he have an obsession like that's why we watch the show right because joe is obsessed found ways to make it interesting like okay he found someone crazier than him or you know there's other people now involved knowing joe and him having to like now navigate with like a group of like alpha male guys and like <sighs> i don't know does this any make sense because like for me i don't know I just think it's like, and it's just like a, mer it's like becomes like, it's like Clue. It's like watching the movie Clue, which I know a lot of people say is like legendary. I love Tim Curry, whatever, but that movie's not legendary to me. It's just cheesy and outdated. I, I have zero connection to the characters in season four. I was connected to every single character in season three. Every single one. I don't know. Do shows miss the mark? Yeah, even Lost. Okay. <laughs> the last season of Lost was like, what's even happening? So all over the place. <laughs> like, what? Like, like, the original characters are just no longer part of the plot. They lost the plot. I think when they started time traveling. But like, hey, I get it. If I was Penn Badgley, I'd be like, sign me up all day long. And the fact that, sh that the show is so successful and he is the star and he's like the one constant and everything and he's he's like the lead he's the breakout he's the star of it whatever like, yeah you can have more demands and stuff like that and like why wouldn't you take the check and why wouldn't you try to have you know he said you know the creator was really receptive to it and she was like empowered by it i don't know again i'm not saying it's wrong you know priorities can shift at any time for sure but as a fan i'm so sad about this season <laughs> Because I just can't get into it. And I love, I love season one to three. Like, best show. I'm going to say it's better than Lost. It's better than Lost. I, I love Lost. I had a whole podcast dedicated to Lost. I think it's even better than White Lotus. I love White Lotus. But to me, my favorite TV show of all time was Lost. Desperate Housewives and then probably like White Lotus. This is better than all of those. But season four might be the worst, worst I've ever seen. I'm just confused by it. And maybe that's my borderline in me that's just all or nothing but i'm just like mm, i don't even think i can watch i think there's like four or five episodes airing now and there's a second half and on pod crash they were like oh no like the second half like it explains everything but i just don't get anything happening right now i don't know but i love you i wish i wasn't so late to the show And I love, I love Pim Badgley. I feel like I want to start watching Gossip Girl. Because that's what happened when I saw Naveen Andrews in The Dropout. I had to watch everything he was in. Lost, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, um, The Cleaning Lady. He has a new show on Freebie coming out called like, oh, what was it called? Something, I, I can't remember, but. Something with the Patels or something. Um, it's like the Patels of Pittsburgh. I don't know. I love Naveen Andrews. So I kind of want to watch Gossip Girl. And like, look. Personally, I love that he's like that with his wife. You know, I always love, especially in Hollywood. I love when guys who are like, I love my wife so much. Like, priority first. I don't care about anything else. Like, I just, you know. But is it infidelity? Like, when you're acting when it's your job again i think it's just like his comfortability i don't think he's saying like that's cheating obviously it's not but like that neil they brought it up to the neil mcdonald new 
who I think is a great actor. I was like, oh, okay, kissing is like cheating on my wife. I'm like, okay, yes. I even think texting with someone's cheating. Like, I'm like, I used to be the most jealous and secure person. You know, I'm not very secure in my relationship now. But of course, I like, yeah, if, if he was like texting someone, like a girl, or something, I'd be like, that's cheating in real life. Let's say, you know how um, Vanessa Hutchins like manifested Austin Butler's Elvis role? For some reason, I always see my Moses playing like Moses in like the remake of the Ten Commandments, or like if they did some like crazy, like gory live action of the 10 plays i just see him playing moses because he played jesus when he was in his 30s on like national geographic and like so many shows i could see him playing like moses <laughs> so i always think that in my head i'm always like i'm manifesting that for him I'm like i can see you playing moses babe um <laughs> and yeah maybe he can like for a passover thing or something one day i don't know when he's older when he has like the white hair so let's say he plays moses and there you know there's some hot scene with sephora who's moses is like you know like it's to me it's like yeah, I mean, obviously, don't want, I don't want my husband kissing someone, like, you know, but it's also, like, if it's acting, it's acting, if it's part of the, you know, the story. I get it, though. I mean, I get it, and like I said, I respect it, like, on a personal level. I think, I beyond respect it. I think that's, like, so cool. I love someone who's, like, I love my wife. She's everything, like, it's on a pedestal, but I don't know. I'm also not an actor, so I don't know how those scenes go down. But for me, and again, as someone who can be super jealous and insecure, I don't know if I would mind it if it was my, my husband. But again, I don't know. I'm not in that situation, especially like those kind of scenes. Like, they're definitely not just like kissing. <laughs> I don't know. This is maybe not for me. Maybe I'll just keep watching The Bachelor. <gasps> we even put a halt in The Bachelor. I was like, I need to like watch every minute of this. It's like a little busy over here. But if you guys have any suggestions of shows I should watch, please let me know because I feel like if I see it enough and hear it enough, we'll start to watch it. It's kind of like you. I was like, okay, I'm hearing about this a lot. Like maybe we should just, we should watch this show. That's my favorite show ever. Ma'am, spicy chicken fries. <laughs> Didn't get them today. That's fine. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys have a really great week. March is like February, January through March is like so not exciting. I don't know why. It takes me a minute to get into the new year. I feel like I don't get into it till my birthday, which is in May. And then the year's like over. <laughs> it's like Christmas already. All right, you. <laughs> It's a very good show. Seasons one through three. Oh my God. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. Although we're always so late on these bandwagons. So I don't know. God, I was so hungry today. I like. And if anyone knows when Burger King is actually going to have chicken fries, let me know. Spicy chicken fries. Because I want that. Dang. I feel bad going through Arby's dressed like this. Oh my gosh, like in my Burger King attire. How embarrassing. And I, I bought a U shirt. I have like Beck, Love. I think it's Beck, Love, Marianne, You. Oh, no, no, no. It's Candace, Beck, Love, You. Because I think that was made before um, season three. I got it off Etsy. It's super, super cute. All right, guys. That's so sweet. Woo. Well, thanks for having lunch with me. I've been, like, wanting to, like, really delve. I feel like I could delve into it even more. Just, like, the, this, like, a, the psychological issues and stuff. Like, like, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything by any means. I'm just someone who had severe mental illness. And I was untreated for so long. So, it's, like, it's so interesting to watch that show. Because it's also, like, kind of triggering in the sense of, like, kind of, like, oh, yeah. Like, I remember that feeling. I remember those. I remember, like, looking at people's pages and stuff. Like, it's kind of... 
I mean, and this is like sickness for sure. Um, but the way they do it, or at least the way I view it as someone with mental illness that was once treated, like the kind of, it's like romantic. But a lot of people say, even Pat Crash was like, it's kind of a rom-com. Like, you know, it's kind of this twisted love story. Because at the end of the day, he is like obsessed and love and will do anything for love and protecting these people he falls in love with, which is like interesting. But, but anyways, all right, guys, that's it. Um, maybe I'll do a part two. Maybe I'll try and finish season four so far. I guess the second half comes up on March 9th, I think. Maybe, maybe I'll try and watch it and whatever. But I mean, I literally have like 10 new shirts. <laughs> so I'm like in this, I'm on this like ride, but the wave has, has, uh, has, the tide has turned. <laughs> I think that's the right analogy. I mean, God, the Arby's was so good. Wow. All right, not to drive a half hour home. So I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.